avant de commencer, so before we start learning French together, um, I just wanted to actually tell you something, and it's the fact that uh, French language and English language, well, they've got a special, special relationship. Um, well, the, the first thing that, of course, you probably know, like many other languages, French uh, tend to take quite many new words from English, so these, these are called les néologismes, okay? So it does mean that you already know quite many words uh, in French. Uh, when we're talking about the new words, of course, you will have to pronounce them a bit differently. And the second thing that you should keep in mind, maybe you don't know that already, but the, until the 14th uh, century, uh, approximately 10,000 words were introduced into English language and they were coming from French and Norman. So what does it mean? It does mean that uh, you know a lot, and really I mean a lot, of French words already if you master uh, English. Uh, if it's your mother tongue, then it's, it, it's quite, uh, quite good for you. If it's not your mother tongue, then you will encounter, while we do these, uh, this series of videos, uh, many words that you already know because you've been learning them already in English. Okay, so this is the thing and well, just wanted to start with that. Uh, keep in mind that you already know quite many words in French before you even start learning it. Okay, but now we will start with a serious thing and we will start learning French. La structure de la phrase, so the structure of the sentence in French, okay? So you'll see that in a way it's not that different from uh, English because we are using English here to study and uh, for me to teach. So it means that uh, for us it will be uh, quite nice because in a way French language will actually work or behave uh, in a way similar to English. So first, normally, will come the subject, le sujet. Then you will put the verb, le verbe. And after that will come what we call les compléments. Okay, so this is the normal structure of a sentence. You start with the subject, then will come the verb, and after that you will complete the sentence with more information, so basically des compléments. Okay, so let's see now an example. Je suis français. Okay, je, I, so it's the subject here. Suis, so it's to be, you conjugate it. I am français, in that case it's an adjective and it's French. Okay, je suis français. So it, it goes in, in that order. You will start with the subject, then you will put the verb. You can see that the verb is conjugated here, so you will have to modify it according to the subject. And then after that you will put more information, adjectives, or then, uh, well, other things if you want. And then a second example. Tu habites en France. Okay. Tu, it's you. Habit, the verb is habiter, and then you conjugate it here. Habiter is to live. En France, in France. Okay, so you can see that in that case, it's what we call complément de lieu. Okay, you introduce a place here. Tu habites en France. Okay, so, but then we keep the same order because that's normally the way we should do it. So first the subject, then the verb. Same thing here, you conjugate it according to tu, and after that, in that case, you will put en France. All right, so this is what we call a normal sentence, une phrase normale. Okay, but then, of course, as usual in French, and this is something that you will discover uh, with all these videos that I will make, uh, we've got some exceptions po possible, and then the, the modification you can modify the sentences um, in some cases. Okay, but then this is um, the basic. Okay, you should keep in mind that first you will put the subject, 
then the verb is coming, and after that, les compléments. Le sujet, le verbe, les compléments. Je suis français, tu habites en France, and that's it. Les phrases simples, so simple sentences, and we'll see that right now. So, les phrases simples in French language are la phrase interrogative, la phrase affirmative, la phrase négative, la phrase exclamative, la phrase impérative. Ok So, la phrase interrogative, interrogative sentence, la phrase affirmative, affirmative sentence, la phrase négative, negative sentence, la phrase exclamative, exclamation, la phrase impérative, imperative sentence. And we'll start of course with the first one so for each type of uh, sentence i will put an example okay so let's start with la phrase interrogative aimez-vous le fromage okay so the first thing that you should notice is this point d'interrogation here and then keep in mind that in french we will put a space before Okay, the second thing that you can notice is that you've got the verb here, aimer, aimer is to like or to love, and then you will have this vous, so it's the you, okay, and it's the plural form, aimer vous, do you like, do you love, do you love, sorry, le fromage, so it's cheese, of course, uh, it's a question that a French person could ask, you know, do you love cheese, do you like cheese? And, well, the, the first thing, uh, or the second, because the first one was le point d'interrogation, the second thing that you could notice is that if we want to respect uh, the rule uh, when we ask a question, we should change the order of the sentence. So, normally in French, we've got first the subject, then the verb, but when we ask a question like that, and we want to, well, respect the rule, then we should first put the verb, then the subject. Okay, I will make some videos explaining how it works uh, in real situations or if uh, this is the way that uh, people uh, do normally when they ask a question. Okay, but this is the way it should be done. Okay, so this is a question, c'est d'une phrase interrogative. Aimez-vous le fromage? Aimez-vous le fromage? And remember, you need to raise your voice a little bit at the end. Aimez-vous le fromage? Phrase affirmative. Oui, j'aime le fromage. So in that case, you just want to say that you like or you love cheese. And then this is affirmative. You will start with oui here. Oui, j'aime le fromage. Okay, so you can see that in that case, you will use this je. Okay, I will explain in a the next video why the e is disappearing here but then it's i like i love okay oui j'aime le fromage so you keep the same order subject and then verb okay so the order that actually normally we've got in the french language you will start with the subject and after that the verb is coming la phrase négative Okay, so in that case, you want to say non. Okay, non, je n'aime pas le fromage. No, I don't like cheese. Okay, and in that case, well, we'll see that a bit later as well. You will use this ne and then pas. So basically, when we introduce the negative form in French, we will have two parts. That will be before and after the verb. Okay. Non, je n'aime pas le fromage. La phrase impérative. Mangeons ce fromage. 
Okay, and in that case, you can see quite clearly that you get what we call le point d'exclamation here at the end. Uh, keep in mind that you should put a space before it. Okay, so point d'exclamation, and normally it means that you will use that whether to give an order, in most of the cases it will be for an order, or then if you want to give an advice, it's possible as well. Okay, and in that case, mangeons, so it's at the a new form, okay, so we eat, okay, so let's eat, but then in that case it could be an order, so eat this cheese, okay, you can see that we will see when we'll uh, discover l'imperative form together, that uh, this new, so the subject is not here, it's something quite special for the imperative form, you take away les pronoms personnels, mangeons ce fromage, okay, and in that case this sentence is une phrase impérative. Phrase exclamative, and in that case it's actually interesting because it's so short, and in a way it's a sentence even if you don't have any verb, because here, quel, what, and then bon, good, fromage, so one more time, cheese, what a good cheese, quel bon fromage, okay, it's a sentence, but then clearly you don't have any verb, okay, so it means that in some cases, like this one for instance, you can have sentences without having a verb in them, okay, and it's here in phrase exclamative, quel bon fromage, le sujet and we'll see actually in this video what in French can be subject of a sentence okay le sujet the subject and basically it can be un nom un pronom personnel un pronom interrogatif un pronom indéfini Okay, so when we're, about, sorry, when we're talking about a subject, it can be un nom, and it's a noun, un pronom personnel, and it's a subject pronoun, un pronom interrogatif, interrogative pronoun, or then un pronom indéfini, indefinite pronoun. And we'll see, and we'll of course start with the, the first one, un nom. Okay, so let's start with Un nom. And I just wanted to have a simple sentence in that case. And it will be Vincent enseigne le français. Okay, so Vincent is a first name and it's mine by the way. Enseigne, here you've got a verb. So the verb is enseigner and it's conjugated in that case. Le français. So it's French and we're referring to French language. Vincent enseigne le français. And in this sentence you can see quite easily that Vincent here is the subject of the verb here. Okay? So we could also change this Vincent, take it away and then put le professeur and it means the teacher and it will stay also the subject of the sentence, so it's connected directly to the verb enseigner here. Le sujet peut être un pronom personnel, so it can be also a subject pronoun as we saw. So let's see now how it would go. And in that case, same thing, simple sentence to start. Il visite Paris. Okay, so you get il here. I-L, visit, this is the verb visiter, you conjugate it, il visite Paris. So, in that case you can see also quite easily that this is the subject of the sentence, and it's what we call un pronom personnel. So in English it's more clear because it's subject pronoun, so no doubt about the function. And actually, we'll discover them together. So the first one is je, I, 
tu, you, il, he, elle, she. Okay, so je, tu, il, elle. And then for the plural form, we have nous, we, oui, vous, you. So for the plural form, as in English, we tend to use it, well, of course, for uh, the plural form and also for the polite form. If you meet someone for the first time, it would be nice to use vous instead of tu. Il, they, so it's the masculine in that case, and then elle, they, but it's the feminine in that case. So in French, we make the difference between the masculine form and the feminine form when we use les pronoms personnels at the plural. Okay, so je, tu, il, elle, nous, vous, il, elle. All right. And so let's see now, uh, un pronom interrogatif. So, same thing, simple structure, simple sentence, and the sentence is qui parle, so it's a question, okay? So the verb is parler, parler is to talk, okay? And then when you put this qui, and qui is who, basically this qui becomes of course, the subject in this sentence, and it's a question. Who is talking? Qui parle? Qui parle? And the last one will be un pronom indéfini. And it's also quite useful. And I just wanted to make a simple sentence as well to make it clear. Same verb, parler is to talk, and then Quelqu'un, someone, or somebody. Okay? And in that case, quelqu'un parle, somebody is talking, someone is talking. And in that case, you can see quite easily that quelqu'un is the subject of the sentence. Le sujet et le verbe. So, the subject and the verb. And it's actually quite important when we start to learn French just to know that in French basically the subject will affect the verb. Okay, so I just wanted to take a simple example first because we will focus on the conjugation a bit later. So it's not the idea of this lesson. The idea of this lesson is just to show you that basically the relationship between the subject and the verb is quite close because the verb will be affected by the subject. So the verb is marcher. Marcher is to walk. Okay, and let's take the example of il. Okay, so it's he. And basically when you use il, you will have to conjugate the verb. So conjugate the verb means that for each form you will have a specific ending. Okay? This is the basic form here, marché, it's what we call the infinitive, all right? But then you don't reuse marché just like that. You will have to conjugate it so you will have to modify the ending according to the subject. In that case, il requires that you will put this final e uh, here so you will get il marche all right so whoops sorry <laughs> the r is coming now and then it will be exactly the same thing for the plural form of il so they il marche and if you look carefully the ending is different okay we will see everything covering the conjugation a bit later. It's just to show you that the subject is basically affecting quite much the verb. Okay? And so, when we're talking about this topic, basically, it's quite good to have a, a general view of the conjugation of marché, so how it will be modified according to the subject. So, the first person, je, I, you will get je marche, tu marches, il, elle, okay, so tu is for you, the singular form, and then il, he, elle, she, marche, nous, 
marchons, so it's we, the plural form, vous, you, the plural form, marchez, and then il, oops, sorry, elle, and the plural, marche. So you can see that basically the forms are different, and it's one important thing that you've got to keep in mind, uh, and that can be a bit tricky or difficult at the beginning, but then once you get used, you will remember the endings, okay? So basically, the subject will affect the verb, okay? And it was the topic of this video. Les lettres, so the letters, and basically it is quite important because, of course, when you learn a language, well, you get to know the letters and uh, you want to pronounce it correctly. So, this is exactly what we'll try to do here. I will show you the letters, okay? So, we'll divide them into two groups, the vowels and the consonants, and then I will pronounce them, okay? So, let's first start, sorry, with the vowels. And in French, we have six vowels, six voyelles, okay? Six voyelles, and the first one is A, E, I, O, U, Y. Okay, this one is quite tricky for some of you, maybe, because maybe in your languages uh, this Y is not a vowel but a consonant. Uh, in French, it is a vowel. Okay, A, E, I, O, U, Y. Okay, and then let's see the consonants, and we've got 20 consonants, so 20 consonants, and the first one is B, C, D, F, G, H, J, K, L, M, N, P, Q, R, S, T, V, W, X, Z. Okay, so it's B, C, D, F, G, H, J, K, L, M, N, P, Q, R, S, T, V, W, X, Z. Okay, so it was just to present you these uh, letters, so the six vowels and a 20 consonant that we do have in French. Uh, don't worry, in the coming videos we will focus on the pronunciation and we'll see how to go combine them and uh, how to pronounce them when we combine them, okay? But then keep them in mind and try to practice on your own, okay? Les modes et les temps. So basically when you translate it that directly we're talking about moods and tenses. So basically like in English, uh, if you want to use a verb, and normally when you will use a verb, you will have to basically decide whether you are using a certain mood and also whether you are using a certain tense for this verb. Just because the moods and the tenses will be used in specific context or situations. Okay, so let's see now les modes. Okay, and basically in French we've got the first one that you will use and the first one that we will see together in the coming lessons will be 
l'indicatif. Okay? And l'indicatif is used to express the reality. So what is really happening? Then we'll have le conditionnel. Okay, so basically, like in English, we will use it to express what we call l'éventualité, something that might happen. Okay, and then we'll have this imperative form as well, so imperative mood, sorry, just to express l'ordre, the order, or then le conseil, advice. And then we'll have this subjonctif, which can be quite tricky especially at the beginning because it doesn't exist really in English and it's to express what we call le sentiment. Okay, so basically we'll have these main moods, so l'indicatif, le conditionnel, l'impératif, and then le subjonctif. It does mean that in all these moods, dans toutes ces modes, you will have different tenses as well okay and that's what we are going to see next because basically when we're talking about les temps the tenses well i will make it simple okay and we'll see in the coming or in the next videos uh, how it will work but mainly you will express three things with these tenses and the first one is le présent okay the present then le futur, the future, and then le passé, the past. And we will see that for all these three options, we will have different ways of expressing them. So it does mean that we will have not only three tenses, but much more. Okay, no stress about that, don't worry, we'll do it little by little, so, but just to, to keep in mind that when we're talking about the tenses, well, we express normally le présent, le futur, and then le passé, okay? So keep in mind that we've got les modes, okay, so le mode, and you get to decide what mode or what mood, sorry, <laughs> you will have to use, indicatif, conditionnel, imperatif, or then subjonctif. And the second thing that you have to, to choose is the correct tense, le temps. And then it's présent, futur, and passé. And keep in mind that, as I said, we've got quite many tenses, but we'll see that a bit later. Les signes diacritiques. And I know that the title is quite scary and you probably think that, oh, I don't want to watch this video. But trust me, it's, uh, I mean, it's quite important uh, for a good reason. And well, basically, what is Les Signes uh, Diacritiques? It's the idea that at one point in the language, we will use un signe, a sign, something that you will add to a letter. And by adding this sign to the letter, it will make a new letter. Okay? And it's something quite common in French, and we'll see exactly what we are talking about. Because even if it's scary, the good news is that we've got only cinq signes diacritiques. Cinq signes diacritiques. And the first one is accent aigu. Okay? The second one is accent grave. Third one is accent circonflex, then tréma, and last but not least, cédille. Okay, so accent aigu, accent grave, accent circonflex, tréma, and then cédille. So let's start with l'accent aigu, and it basically, it looks like that. Okay, so this is l'accent aigu, and let's see you will actually put l'accent aigu on the top of E, okay? It doesn't come on the top of A, I, O, U, Y, it's only on E, okay? So keep in mind that l'accent aigu is only coming right here on the top of E, okay? Then you will have l'accent grave, and it goes in the other direction, 
okay but then l'accent grave is actually more used because you can put it on the top of a on the top of e and then on the top of u all right after that you get l'accent circonflex so it's like a little roof here like a little hat and it's it will come on the top of a e i o and u then tréma just like two little dots dots here and it will come on the top of a e i o and then u okay and the last one la cédille if you look carefully basically it will come right below your c letter okay so remember l'accent aigu l'accent grave l'accent circonflexe le tréma la cédille all right and the idea of course in this video it's only is only to present these five signs so in the next lessons in the next units i will focus on explaining how to pronounce them because of course the pronunciation will change if you put l'accent aigu on the top of a uh, basically you won't pronounce it like you would pronounce it without the accent okay but then keep in mind that we've got these five signes diacritiques accent aigu accent grave accent circonflexe tréma cédille les ligatures so even if it's a bit scary let's start the video and basically what are we talking about when we're talking about les ligatures well we're talking about two letters uh, some strange letters you might say this is the first one and this is the second one they are quite rare in the french language but basically you can see them and you need to know what they are and that's the reason why i've been making this little video so the first one is this e dans la okay so basically if you translate directly it's e inside or in a and that's the reason why because if you look carefully it's only one letter here and like if these two letters were glued okay or connected like that so it's e dans la let's see a few examples of words that use this e dans la and the first one is curriculum vitae the second one is execo then etc and then ad vitam eternam and so if you look carefully at these words you realize that this letter is coming directly from latin okay so uh, and it's quite rare to see this letter in french language well you've got here some examples but uh, i've been choosing the, the the more common examples because the other one probably you will you will never use them or maybe never encounter them but anyway uh, it is rare but it does exist and uh, it can be a challenge in some cases for some of you to write this letter correctly if you want to write it with your computer because you've got to go through insert and then after that symbol so basically it's up to you if you want to write it correctly you should put of course this e dans la uh, if you don't manage to put it then just put a and after e uh, maybe your computer will correct it automatically you never know okay the second one is this one and it's e dans l'eau so basically the same concept so e inside o all right so because it's only one letter here and you get this o and e connected like glued okay to each other so let's see because this one is uh, actually uh, used a bit more often and i've been selecting few words and the first one is un boeuf 
un cœur, un cœur, it's actually quite interesting because even if you write them differently, you pronounce them the, the same way, un œil, un œuf, une sœur, ok, so, un bœuf, un cœur, un cœur, un œil, un œuf, une sœur. Alright, so these words are actually not that rare and we'll see exactly what they mean. The first one, un bœuf, okay, steer, ox, or then un cœur, heart, un œuf, egg, un cœur, is it choir, choir? I'm not really sure about the pronunciation in English, sorry about that, I don't want to make any mistake. Then we've got un œil, I, and then une sœur, sister. Okay, and this letter is actually uh, more often used, okay, than the, the previous one. Uh, and then it's, well, basically it will be exactly the same challenge if you want to uh, write it correctly with your computer, uh, whether you try to find uh, this letter by inserting uh, a symbol, okay, or then you just put O and then after that you will put a, uh, okay. Technically it's a mistake, but then basically if you cannot make uh, uh, in another way, then just write it O and E, uh, okay. Le masculin et le féminin, so the masculine and the feminine. And actually, uh, in French, uh, when it comes to grammar, we've got uh, the difference between the masculine form and the feminine form, and we'll see that it will affect uh, quite deeply the, the, the language. For instance, uh, we've got, when it comes to les, les pronoms personnels, we will have the difference between the masculine and the feminine. So we'll start with the feminine, ladies first, and it's L, okay? So she, so in that case, it is the feminine singular form, L, okay? For the masculine, it will be il. So in English, it will be he, okay? Il, so in that case, it's the masculine singular form form. When it comes to the plural, actually in French we also have the difference between the feminine and the masculine. So basically here, elle, it's the feminine plural form, okay? And then in the same way here, il will be the masculine plural form. So if you look carefully, the only difference between the singular and the plural, it's this final s here. Same thing here between il and il, it's the final s. And if you listen carefully, basically you don't have any differences, so it's l and l, il and il. Okay, the grammar rule is quite strict in French. If you've got a group of persons and um, in this group you've got at least one man, it will be masculine. Okay, so let's see now if you discover a new word. Okay, so it could be a noun, it could be an adjective. Um, in that case, the, the good uh, reflex would be to try to see and to try to remember whether it's uh, feminine or whether it's masculine. Okay, because it will basically uh, affect after that, and we'll see that in this video, what will come after. And in most of the cases, we're talking about uh, the adjectives. Okay, so it's always good to remember the gender of a word. Okay, uh, of course, in that case, if you're encountering a new noun, so basically you try to remember the gender at the same time. I will make some videos uh, covering the topic and that, um, well, give you, giving you a few tips to try to see, you know, whether it's masculine or feminine according to the ending of the word. In some cases it can help, but in most of the cases, you will have to remember the gender. Uh, just when you, when you discover a new word, try to remember the gender at the same time, okay? So for a good reason, and this is now what I will explain it, uh, I will explain, sorry. Well, basically, when you get a noun, it will 
actually be connected to an adjective and whether it's masculine or feminine basically in French the adjective will be changed also so let's see an example here we've got un pays chaud so if we translate directly it's un pays it's a country a country and it's show is warm hot okay un pays Show. So you can see that here, P is masculine, un is the article, the masculine article, un pays show. And in that case, your adjective is like that, written at the basic form. So the masculine form is the basic form. And if we take another word, like boisson, boisson is feminine, une boisson, Okay, so here you've got the article, and it's the feminine form of the article. Une boisson. And you can see that here your adjective is changing. You will have to put this final E, chaud, okay, at the end. And then the pronunciation will change a little bit. Chaud. So here you pronounce the final D, whereas in the masculine form you don't pronounce it. Okay, all right, so it's just an introduction, don't worry. In the coming videos, I will explain everything. So the articles, the adjective, the way to put the feminine form, everything. So in this video, it's just to show you that basically the masculine and the feminine, so whether it's a noun at the masculine and at the feminine, it will affect uh, the adjective connected to it. Okay, and then it's also... Uh, actually possible that the noun or as we saw le pronom personnel will affect the verb we are talking in that case about uh, what we call compound tenses so we will cover that um, probably in unit four five or six uh, have a look there we're talking about le passé composé for instance so the past tense and basically let's have a look there you will have il est Aller, okay, it's the masculine form here. So, aller is to go, and this is the compound tense of il est allé, all right. And then you will have here, elle est allée, so basically, he went, she went, all right. And here, you can see that you will have the difference between the masculine and the feminine. But don't worry about that, because I will explain that later. It's just to show you that Basically, the difference between the masculine and the feminine will concern, of course, the subject, so pronom personnel, and then the nouns, but it will also affect what is coming after, so it can be an adjective, as we saw, or it can be a verb. In that case, it's a compound tense, so it's this past uh, tense, le passé composé. All right, so no stress about that. I will explain everything after, okay? Just keep in mind that we've got a difference between the masculine and the feminine. And so my tip for this video will be when you discover a new word, as I said, try to remember whether it's masculine, or sorry, feminine here, or masculine, okay? Merci beaucoup. Oui et non. Oui et non. So basically, yes and no. Oui et non. So because I thought, you know, it might be useful to make this video. Uh, in some situations, I've been assuming that people would understand and would know how to use oui et non. But it's not always the case. And um, well, basically, I don't expect them to do that. And as I am doing this video and this series of videos for beginners and total beginners, then this is the reason why I thought it might be useful to introduce oui, yes, and then non, no. So basically, when you have a question here, uh, well, in French, you can answer with oui, yes, or then with non, no. It might seem simple, but it's just the way it is, and let's make it quite clear. And that's the reason why we have this question. Vous parlez français? 
Okay, basically, do you speak French? I just put that in that order because normally it should be verb first and after the subject if we want to construct a correct uh, question. But in many situations, especially when we talk, we can keep the same order. We just need to raise the voice at the end. So, of course, l'Académie Française would like me to put them in the other order. But basically, you will hear many French people and many French speaking people just keep the same order and raise their voice at the end. Okay. Vous parlez français. So basically it's a question. Do you speak French? And in that case, you've got, well, two possible answers. And if you want to actually enter answer, sorry, uh, in a short way, the first option would be oui or then non. Of course, at one point, and that's the reason why we'll have these videos, uh, you will have uh, the possibility to construct sentences. But basically, if you want to answer shortly, it's not rude. It's quite um, just you, you just show that you don't really want to, to, to talk that much. But basically, you just answer to the question. So we, oui, yes, and then no, no. Let's see now how it will work if we have a question. But if this question is at the negative form. Okay, because in that case, it's somehow a bit tricky, because strangely, for the affirmative answer, it won't be we, oui, but it will become si. And then for the negative, it will be exactly the same, it will be no. Okay, so keep in mind, if you get a question, but then this question is at the negative form, then instead of using we, oui, you will use si, but then no will be the same. Okay, so let's see the same question. Vous ne parlez pas français? So you don't speak French? Okay, so this is how it works for the negative form. Don't worry, in few videos I will explain you how it works exactly, okay? But at this point it's only to introduce Oui, non, si, non. Okay, so it's a negative question in that case. You don't speak French? And the answer would be si or then non. Obviously, at one point you would like to uh, make sentences instead of using these two uh, possibilities. Okay, but it's just to show you that, you know, <laughs> actually you've got these two options. So if you've got a question, the first one would be oui or then no. If it's a negative question, then it will be si or no. Okay? La ponctuation. So let's discover together the punctuation in French. Okay? So we can start. And I thought it might be useful to start with this one. And it's le point. Okay, so le point. And for this video, I will actually tell you how to put uh, these uh, punctuation signs and if we need to put some spaces or not, because it does change a little bit if you compare it to English, for instance. So let's see now le point. So let's imagine that you will have your sentence or it could be a word like that. And after that, you will put le point then you will have to put a space and the next word will come, okay? So it could be a sentence before, a sentence after, but the main thing is to remember that you don't have any space before, but you will have one after, okay? So let's see now the next one, and it's le point virgule, okay? Le point virgule, and le point virgule works like that, mot numéro un, then you will put, you would put sorry le point virgule without any space, then a space and the next word or the rest of the sentence. Okay. La virgule. Okay. So la virgule. And for la virgule, actually, you will have the first word. Then la virgule is coming without any space. Then you will put a space and the rest of the sentence or the next word is coming after.
Okay, nothing before, one space after. Le point d'interrogation. Le point d'interrogation. Okay, and in that case, keep in mind that you will have whether your sentence or this word then. And this is quite important because it does change from other languages. You put a space. You put le point d'interrogation. Okay. Then after that, a space and the rest will follow. Okay. So this is quite important. Remember that we will put in French a space before le point d'interrogation. Because it's not the case in, uh, well, some other languages. Okay. And now, le point d'exclamation. Okay, so le point d'exclamation, you will have your sentence and then the previous word. Then, un espace, space. Then, you will put your point d'exclamation here. After that, a space. And the next word is coming. Same thing as we had for le point d'interrogation. Remember that you will have to put a space before. Les deux points, okay, les deux points, and then they work like that, le mot, then you will have to put space, les deux points are coming right after, another space after, then the rest will come. Okay, so remember, one space before, one space after. Les guillemets. Okay? Les guillemets. And concerning les guillemets, actually, it will go like that. So you will have your sentence or, well, the previous word, then a space, then the first one. After that, a space, then you put what you want to put between them. <laughs> Another space, guillemets again space and the rest of the sentence or the next word or whatever you want here but you've got to keep in mind that here it's quite tricky space then guime space what you put between space guime space and what comes after les points de suspension les points de suspension and regarding les points de suspension it will become it will come sorry like that so what comes before le mot or then the sentence and then les points de suspension space and then the next word or what comes after the sentence if you want okay so nothing before a space after Les parenthèses, les parenthèses, okay, and regarding les parenthèses, well, the first word, then you will put a space, then the first part, so la première parenthèse, your word, or then a group of words, fermer la parenthèse, then you will put a space, and after that, the next part is coming. Okay, so remember, before and after, nothing between. Okay? Écrire en français. So, write in French. And, uh, well, I thought it might be useful to just make this little video because I've been teaching for quite many years now and I've been noticing that at one point um, my students tend to be a bit disappointed or sad because they just realized one important thing in French and it's the difference between what je prononce, I pronounce and j'écris 
I write because basically you can see that of course you will have some connections between what you pronounce and what you write but we've got many many things that we will have to write and we won't pronounce I thought it might be useful to start uh, and give you an example here with the verb parler okay so we will make the conjugation remember that we will focus on the conjugation in another video that will come a bit later okay but it's just to give you a good example here so parler is to speak or to talk and it's a regular verb so it belongs to the first group ending with a air so let's see how we conjugate it at the present tense je parle tu parles il elle parle nous parlons vous parlez il elle parle okay so basically you got here this je and it's i je parle i talk i speak tu and tu is for you okay and it's the singular form tu parles here you talk you speak il it's for the masculine form he il and then elle feminine form she elle okay so il elle and then we've got the same form parle then comes the plural form nous so we okay and in that case it's nous parlons vous you so it's the plural form or then we will see a bit later that it, it can be also for the singular if it's the polite form okay vous parlez and then we've got il so they but then in french we divide and we make the difference between the masculine plural so il here and elle the feminine plural il elle parle all right so we've got je parle tu parles il parle elle parle nous parlons vous parlez il parle elle parle and if you look carefully, you write it with E here, E S, E, then you get E N T here. So I only take these four forms just for a good reason. It's just because if you look carefully and if you listen to me, I will pronounce it Je parle, tu parles, il parle, elle parle. Il parle, elle parle. So it does mean that even if you write them differently, E, E, S, and then E, N, T, you will pronounce them the same way. And this is basically the difficult thing about French uh, language. It's just a, the big difference between what you say, what you pronounce, and what you write. Okay? So in this example, for this verb, actually, if we finish it like that you can see that you've got three phonetical forms the first one is parle okay the yellow one then you've got nous parlons and then you've got vous parlez but of course at one point if you want to write it correctly you will have to remember the endings and you will have to put this s here for instance if you want to write it correctly or then a n t here even if you pronounce them the same way okay so my advice would be <laughs> if you want to be happy <laughs> uh, well basically when you see it's coming yeah when you see a new word a nouveau mot uh, well word in general so it can be a verb it can be an adjective it can be a noun whatever when you see a new word uh, try to remember of course how you will pronounce it but then try, try also to remember how to write it correctly.